I'd like to introduce our first speaker. It's Miles Lubin from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. His field of research is operations research. And for his, his advisor is John Juan Pablo Vielma, and his practicum was at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Miles? Okay, so thanks for waking up early and, and coming to see this talk. Um, I'm going to be talking about a software package called Jump. It is a modeling language for mathematical optimization, and I'll explain what that means. Um, this was a project that I worked on um, with fellow students Ian Dunning and Joey Hutchett, all at MIT. And this will actually not be part of my thesis, although I will be using it for my thesis. So I know this is a diverse audience. I wanted to motivate um, mathematical optimization and just give some very traditional applications of it. Um, some of the first applications of optimization in the 1940s, 1950s were in military logistics. A very classical problem is the diet problem, where you're trying to come up with a, a, a diet for soldiers to consume, uh, minimizing the cost of the ingredients and, and satisfying nutritional requirements. So this is a very classical problem. Um, in economic modeling, the World Bank in the 1970s actually developed one of the first modeling languages that's still in use today. Um, so economists are a big um, consumer of optimization techniques. Um, scheduling is, is also a very big application area. Um, if you're scheduling nurses in a hospital, um, scheduling trains, um, uh, train schedule, airlines were also a big uh, initial user of operations research to to minimize costs, assign crews to planes, assign um, planes to locations. And the project that I've worked on, uh, an application where I've worked on is scheduling production of, of power plants on, on, let's say, a 24-hour period. You have to decide how much um, does each power plant uh, produce. Do you return a power plant on and off? And, and the, 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 because the system is, is, has such a large scale, even um, Saving 1% in production costs is easily millions of dollars over a short period of time, so that it's worth putting in the effort to optimize these things. Um, optimal control, um, autonomous vehicles, for example, that's also an area um, where, where you might solve these sorts of optimization problems in, inside of a um, inside of a control system, and also s statistics, regression, inference problems. These are areas where optimization problems typically come up and, and the field of statistics um, oftentimes uses um, the results that, that optimization people develop. And just to give a preview, JUMP is actually being used already in some of these application areas and I'll, I'll give a bit more detail later. Okay, so what is a modeling language? I think a good analogy here is to think about um, MATLAB and, and linear algebra. MATLAB was, was created in the late 1970s to provide a user-friendly interface to LINPACK. So the reason MATLAB was, cr was created is so that you could write y equals a backslash x, and under the hood it would go and turn, turn this into a call to this Fortran routine and, and give you your answer back. So that, that was basically the initial motivation for MATLAB, even though it came to do much more than that. This is, this is what motivated the, the development of MATLAB. Um, and for optimization, it's a very similar idea. If you want to write down an optimization problem in kind of mathematical syntax, um, what a modeling language would do is, is take this mathematical syntax, um, translate it into a form that existing algorithms know how to consume. So if you have a linear optimization problem, you can encode all of your problem data in a, in a matrix. So what you would do is turn this um, into a matrix. So you can see matrix might be <coughs> Uh, two, three, you have a one, zero, one here, a zero here, zero, one, turns it into a matrix, sends it off to an existing algorithm, and gives you the answer back. So that it's a pretty simple problem to solve, even though it's very important, because if you can write down your problem in this form, it's much better than, than generating a matrix. Um, so it, optimization problems typically have Linear optimization problems have typically very sparse and very structured um, constraint matrices. So if you, if you wanted to go all out and not use one of these tools, which is the equivalent of writing Fortran code and using LAPAC, 
the equivalent of that for optimization would be to write some code which generates this matrix and the dots here represent non-zeros in the matrix. So if you, if you really want to go out and write your code to generate the sparse matrix, uh, feel free, but it's, it's not a fun thing to do. Um, you'd much rather think about the mathematical form, um, which turns into something that looks um, much more friendly to humans. And this is, for ex example, is jump syntax, where we're creating some optimization variables, adding some constraints, setting an, op a, an objective function, and saying solve. So this is, I would say this is a much better thing to do than, than to write um, Fortran code to generate the sparse matrix and have to deal with all the, the details there. Okay, so modeling languages have been around for a long time, um, and I spent a year at Argonne before my, my PhD, um, so I was familiar with the tools out there, um, and I wasn't really happy with any of them. Um, kind of before we started working on, on, on Jump, what we, what we wanted out of modeling languages, first it should be, it should be modern, and what you can imagine what I mean by that, um, it should be modular. You should be able to think about composing different pieces of models um, using um, modern programming concepts or using functions to compose models. That's a pretty natural thing to want to do. Um, might want to embed it inside of a bigger, a bigger thing. Uh, for example, a simulation. You might want to solve an optimization problem in a loop. Um, you might want to solve an optimization problem in an, an interactive visualization. Um, these are all things that we wanted to do. Um, with a modeling language. Another thing we wanted to do was to interact with solvers while they're running. So these algorithms, it's not quite like linear algebra where you just, where there's, these algorithms are pretty typically black boxes. In optimization, um, if you're designing algorithms, you may want to interact with these, with these, um, soft, with their, these software packages while they're running. Um, and typically to do that, you, before jump, you would need to um, code in, in C or C++. Um, we also want to be able to extend a modeling language to specialized problem classes, and I'll give a couple examples of that later. Um, and the problem with the, the commercial tools I mentioned, um, Ample, GAMS, Lindo, and a, and a couple others, um, they really have none of these properties. They're, they're not super modern. They were developed in the 70s, 80s, early 90s. Um, not very easy to embed, um, hard to interact with solvers while they're running, and definitely not easy to, to extend. Um, so th those are the commercial tools. Um, they're very popular, though. They're good at what they were designed for, but we actually want to do things that they were not designed for. Um, on the other hand, there are also a few open source tools um, based on Python and MATLAB, and they're good. They're, they're, they're useful for, for particular cases, but as soon as you move into Python or MATLAB, we found that there's a huge performance penalty. Um, so it could be the case that um, that the time that this modeling system takes to generate the matrix could be longer than the time to solve the problem, and that's a pretty bad situation to be in. Um, so we definitely don't want um, to be in that case. Um, so that's, that's kind of the state of the arts and what we were looking for when, when Julia came along. It's a, Julia's a programming language. Um, if you haven't looked at this blog post, it's one of the um, it's a blog post that the founders of Julia put out when it was first announced in, in 2012. And they, they kind of explain why they created Julia. Um, they're, the founders, they're very familiar with, uh, with all the existing tools. They, they're coming from MATLAB background, C++, R, Python, all of the above. Um, and they're familiar with the trade-offs of all of these languages. And they really wanted one that had fewer trade-offs. So why not, for example, have a programming language that's as easy to use as, as MATLAB, and it's fast, and it's open source? That's, that's one way to think about Julia, although there's a lot of other ways to think about it as well. Um, so they basically wanted more than what, what was there. And as soon as Julia was announced, I started playing around with it, um, thought it was pretty pretty cool language. Um, and by the... Um, Beginning of my uh, first year as, as a graduate student, um, we were playing around and the question was, can, can Julia solve the performance problem with these modeling languages? Could we write a model, modeling language that um, is competitive with, with commercial tools and, and doesn't have this performance penalty and it's open source in a high level language, all of the things that we wanted? Um, 
And the answer is, uh, I would say yes. Um, if you saw my poster probably three years ago, this table was on there. Um, I won't have time to go through too much, but this is, these are model generation times, um, and we're about on the same order of magnitude as Ample and Gorobi. These are two commercial tools. Um, Pulp and Pyomo are, tool, are two open source tools um, in Python. And the point is that we're on the same order of magnitude as the commercial tools, and there's once you move into Python land, you're, you're paying a factor of, of 10, uh, approximately. Um, so with that, we just kept, work, we kept working on, on, on Jump. We kept adding the features that we wanted for our own work. For example, these callbacks are what we use to interact with, with, with solvers while they're running. Uh, we added support for nonlinear optimization, which means that if you write down a closed form algebraic expression, uh, what Jump does is it will compute the derivatives automatically uh, up to the second order, uh, give you um, and hand those derivatives off to the solver so you can run your gradient based um, first order or second order optimization algorithm. So that's what Jump does for nonlinear optimization. Um, so I wanted to give a few examples of how people have been, been using it. Some of these are, are, are pretty cool. Um, there was a talk last month at, at JuliaCon, the Julia Conference, on using Jump for autonomous vehicles. It's on YouTube if you want to watch it. Um, and I was told that there are actually um, cars on the, on the streets in, in California using um, Jump inside of their, their control systems, uh, which is pretty, pretty scary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm definitely not, not liable for, for anything that happens. <laughs> um, um, people have used Jump to look at electric vehicle charging schedules, um, railway schedules. This is actually one that went into production in, in Canada. Um, variational Bayes is a statistical inference technique um, where they use Jump as part of the solving this optimization problem. Um, there's a professor at, at Berkeley who works on environmental economics who's, who's a big fan of Jump. Um, and there's also a group out, uh, associated with Los Alamos and they came up with a new, new technique for, for solving an optimal, uh, optimal power flow problem based on graphical models, very cool stuff. And they said that um, without Jump they really couldn't have done the work because it, they, they didn't have a coder, they didn't have someone to say make this run fast. Um, but using Jump was, was enough to get the results that they, that they needed. Um, and also I wanted to put this title up here because I have, I have no idea what it means. Um, <laughs> it's a paper from a plasma physics and controlled fusion journal. journal. Hopefully someone understands this, but they, they use Jump. I don't know what they use it for, but it's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, does anyone know what this means? <laughs> okay, you can, you can tell me later if you know what this is. Um, and if you do have questions about Jump, um, you can, you don't even need to ask me. There's now a book out there that a professor um, at, in Florida wrote on uh, Julia Programming for Operations Research is targeted at um, incoming first year graduate students, kind of getting them um, started with using Julia and Jump is a, is a big part of that. Um, so we're pretty happy to see that there's a, People are interested enough in this that they're willing to, to write these books, which means that we, we don't have to. Um, it's very good for us. Um, and so that, that's Jump. I want to talk a bit about um, an ex a couple extensions we've worked on with, with labs. So um, structured modeling means that, well, we have some Jump supports um, a very standard class of problems, linear optimization, nonlinear optimization. Um, but there are also different ways you could write down an optimization problem, which are not these standard problem classes. So structured model is, um, this is, this is a, this is still a linear programming problem, but the, but the constraint matrix has a very particular structure. Um, and, and Argon has a solver called PIPS, which takes problems in these forms, um, that typically come, come out of energy applications. These could be, um, if you have a lot of random scenario, uh, random samples, and these could be random samples where, where you're optimizing over. Um, so Argon has a solver called PIPS, which takes in a problem in this form. It wants these matrices, um, T1, T2, W2, up to Wn. Um, that's the input form. And then it will take this and solve it on an MPI cluster and, and give you the answer back. Um, and the, pro the problem here is that um, 
in order to use their solver up to before we started working with them, you would need to write some C++ code, MPI aware, which would generate these matrices, these sparse matrices, uh, which is definitely not something that practitioners would ever want to do. Um, so Joey Hutchett um, was kind of the, the lead developer. He spent a couple of weeks at Argonne uh, two years ago. He worked with Cosman Petra, um, and Feng King recently joined this project to work, extend it to nonlinear optimization. Um, so we developed an extension to jump called struct jump, and it lets you write down a problem like this in algebraic form. Um, the extension is MPI aware, and it will generate these matrices for you and, and hand them off to the solvers. Um, it's a very small amount of code. It's like 200 lines of code. It's not a, not a hard problem um, once you have all the other infrastructure that we, that we have. Um, and when we worked on this, we were able to get the model generation time to less than 2% of the solution time, which is, which is all we care about. It's not worth spending any more time optimizing. But this shows how you, can use, how you could use Julia to kind of provide a user-friendly interface to these, these very large C++ uh, MPI-type projects. Um, and it does not involve too much overhead. Um, Jump Chance is an extension I worked on um, during my practicum at Los Alamos. Uh, this is not parallel computing. I would still call, call it high performance, but high performance on a smaller scale. Um, the model that we're thinking about is, is trying to look at the effects of, of wind energy on the power grid and how, and how we can um, integrate that into the optimization. So one, one ma ma mathematical model for that is thinking about um, enforcing constraints that hold with a certain probability where, where this inde normal, independent normal could be your input from wind. I'm not going to talk about the Gaussian assumption, but um, if you want to enforce a constraint like this in your problem, there is a standard way to, to handle this, um, but we can provide a syntax for this so that you can think of your problem and write it down computationally in terms of, in terms of random variables and, and, and constraints that hold with high probability. So this is just a little way that you can extend um, the standard problem class, add in a bit of mathematical modeling, and this is now something that an engineer could, could, could think about and interact with, and you don't need a PhD in operations research to, to, to do a case study like this. Um, so I could talk a lot more, but I, I'll end here. Uh, I want to thank CSGF. I think it's fair to say that without CSGF, I probably wouldn't have felt as free as I did to ignore research um, for a while to work on this. Um, so thanks to CSGF. I um, also want to thank the Julia developers and community. It's a, it's a pretty friendly and growing community. Um, there's a lot of people who have um, helped us, who have used Jump, given us feedback, um, made it better. Um, and with that, I'll take questions.